first time that I think I have a friendly crowd to speak of regarding pension. Um, so Governor, walk in here, Governor Rick Scott.
country and having patterns accepted. But what happens is the, a, a, the great ideas all get found. But the capital comes and takes those ideas and moves them somewhere else. We've got to get the capital to stay and to come to Florida, attract capital. A couple of years ago, uh, and again, if you come back to Jeff Adler, if you've been part of all this, we created something called the Florida Growth Fund. The Florida Growth Fund is right now up to $400 million to invest in Florida technology companies. Guess where it is? It's in Fort Lauderdale. And guess who it's managed by? A group called Hamilton Lane. You may not know who Hamilton Lane is. Hamilton Lane is one of the largest private equity firms in the world. They manage over $100 billion today in their portfolio. Hamilton Lane is in Fort Lauderdale. We attracted one of the single largest private equity firms in the world to Fort Lauderdale with $400 million to start to invest in technology companies in Florida. Now, let's be clear, it's not brand, it's venture capital. And you better have a good deal and have a track record and a good business plan if you're going to ever get any of that money. But it exists here today. We've got groups in Boca Raton called New World Angels, which is a group of investors that have come together collectively to start giving early stage seed funding. Governor, that's one thing the state needs is seed funding. We are in need of seed funding for our university innovation projects. Because it's a seed funding, it's an incubation, it's the helping on the patents, the business planning, the accounting, the legal, the executive recruitment, the engineering recruitment. We get all that together. Now we're not just attracting them. We're not paying a company $20 million to bring 20 engineers. We're building them from scratch here. They're going to create 20,000 employees here. That's how it's done. And it's being done. It's been done in Austin, Texas. It's been done in Silicon Valley. It's been done in Boston, Massachusetts. It's been done in Minneapolis, Minnesota. There's a track record to create the ecosystem. We've got to create the ecosystem in Broward, and the driver again in the ecosystem is Nova Southeast University. That's what we need to do to create innovation and entrepreneurship. Now I'm going to talk about the second part, which is the day-to-day blocking and capture that we need to do, that we do in Tallahassee. Sometimes we do it well, and other times we don't do it well. But it's what we need to do the third part, is to attract business and create the environment uh, uh, for our existing businesses to continue to succeed. Clearly, there's no doubt, Florida is overregulated, but so is every government entity. Why are we overregulated? One of the reasons we're overregulated, quite frankly, is because over the years, the business community has come to Florida and said, do this or do that or do that, to try to get maybe a competitive advantage or two, and we do it. So what do we need to do? We need to clear all that up and send all you away from Tallahassee. That's what we ultimately need to do. We have too many regulations, there's no doubt about it. We've got to stop, not just, it's not just about getting rid of them, it's stop putting them in. Because we keep putting them in is what, is what we do. If it were up to me, I will not be Senate President, but, but I have Jeff Atwater here, the former Senate President, I would get rid of the whole Commerce Committee. Because I'm tired of, uh, of, of being in the middle of fighting mobile home dealers versus mobile home manufacturers. And that's a lot of what we get done up there. And we've got, to st we've got to be true to the fact that we cannot be refereeing business battles. I believe in the free markets. I really, truly do. If the phone and cable company are going at it, go at it. Have at it. We shouldn't be the referee. And we are too often the referee, and that's a problem. I want to talk about pension reform for a moment. Pension reform is under my offices uh, at the Florida Center. And it has been quite a heavy lift. 3,000 phone calls minimum to our office so far. But I'll tell you, it's interesting because we've returned over 1,000 of those calls. And it's fascinating to hear what people think out there. Um, I'm not here, I'm not going to talk much about the Florida retirement system today. And, and, and there's a reason for that because for our retirement system, while reform is needed, there's no question reform is needed because unfunded liabilities are on the backs of the taxpayers. So we need reform. The major crisis is at the local level. Okay, we must focus on the local level. We have cities in Broward County, but throughout the state, that right now 50, 60, 70 percent of their payroll, of their payroll, is going towards their retirement. Okay, we are setting ourselves up the same way the real estate crashed, 
Imagine what's going to happen when the municipal bonds crash, crash across the country. Now, I should say this publicly, uh, because I, I'm imagining a room like this, there may be someone from a rating agency or two. But I can only imagine if the rating agencies really start getting deep down on what's going on in these local municipalities, that these bond ratings are going to shoot down. I mean, I would never do this in Florida, but heck, I think it's great that there's an opportunity outside of Florida to start shorting all these municipal bonds right now. If they make billions of dollars doing that in the real estate market, the same opportunity is here today. We've got to get our arms around this. Now, there's two core issues. One is the overtime issue. We've got to make sure that compensation is redefined. Okay? The idea that people are retiring at two, three hundred thousand dollars at a hundred percent higher than their base salary is absurd. Okay? The overtime issue is critical. The second issue, which is critical, is something called the insurance premium tax. As a 1999 law in the state of Florida, uh, uh, and I was, in, I was living in California, and I was back, and I guess all you guys about to go through your 2000 recount, okay? There was a law that was passed that said that all insurance premium tax money must go to pay for new benefits. We've got to revise that law. So that law, so that money can go to pay down unfunded liabilities. The money exists to pay down unfunded liabilities. That's a good thing. The money's already there. So if we just change that law, we get the overtime issue uh, settled, we can pretty easily fix what's going on at the local levels. And then the other big issue has been these 401k plans um, that have been out there. I see Jack Sire over there. He uh, uh, changed, revised the city of Fort Lauderdale, and other than first responders, I believe all your employees, new, new employees, are on uh, 401k plans, correct? And I want to know what's so bad about them. My first job in 1992, I, I was on one. I, I don't know why everyone's so scared of the 401 I, I don't get that, but, but that may be a bit of a city issue, and, and you have the city of Fort Lauderdale, which is taking that if you want, and, and I would certainly, certainly push other cities to, to do the same. So we've got to get our arms around pension. The good news is, politically it may be difficult, but the policy of fixing pension is not that challenging, especially at the local level. We go, those two things push the cities into, you know, to push more 401k plans. We can fix pensions very, very, very quickly. Uh, on the local level, and so I, I think we should feel confident and we should all, all push that, and for all the city officials here, I hope we strive, strive to do that as well. If we do all that, then we're creating an environment where existing businesses, existing businesses can grow, because I talk about, you know, growing the starting business, and, and the governor talks a lot about attracting businesses, and those are, we need to do that, but we can't forget about our existing business community. How do we grow our existing business community? Whether it's whether it's the unfunded liabilities going into, you know, we just talking about the citizen, the catastrophic fund, you know, making your property tax system more and more and more equitable. We must also focus our entire block and tackling uh, that we do in Tallahassee on allowing existing business to grow and not forget about that. So, again, Charlie, I want to thank you uh, for inviting me here today and. and, and Alan, maybe I know you're here somewhere as well. I really appreciate it. It's a great view up here uh, when you see all, all these people, the business community in Broward County, who actually uh, uh, come together. Um, it does it does demonstrate that we are collective, we're not fragmented, and, and we do care.